Hi, I'm Henrik Linder from Dirt Loops, and we're gonna play here in Helsinki today. Uh, the venue is really, really hard to pronounce. What's it called? Vanha Ylioppilastalo. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna <laughs> play there, and uh, like, uh, let's run through some of the gear I'm using tonight. Uh, it's two Madison bases, it's a one-man company, but these are built together with this fret company, True Temperament, in their factory. Oh, nice. This one is hand-built by him, but uh, so this one is brand new and this one I have for 10 years. Okay. So, like, yeah, the signal chain starts with, obviously, the base. The base goes into this thing, uh, the wireless system, that's for both me and the singer. And then it goes into like, this ISO box, uh, like supposed to like not do sound interference I don't really know what it does like, like it makes it like more hum or something. yeah exactly uh, we had some problem with the hum but it was just the ground lift so it goes in here okay. through like uh, in the tuner and then into this morning star that's a switcher so it turns on and off pedals like if you press it or do things oh. chain goes in here but this is kind of the brain so this turns everything on and off so like yes uh, you know, like, I'll, show some setting that actually has MIDI. So this one, like here's a normal and you can see here when I press, press here, oh yeah, then it makes a noise and <laughs> like it turns on this one, the looper A and C, which is uh, the compressor and uh, the SY200. So yeah, it, uh, it does that and I haven't removed the plastic yet. So then it's like a stereo out there and there's another output that goes into the EBS, the EBS 802, a uh, really great amp, uh, and here's a new cabinet. I usually play the Proline uh, cabinets uh, otherwise, but this is also a really good yeah. cabinet. Like my first uh, amp that I ever got was an EBS, it was like a Proline 8x10 and uh, the old Fafner. And then I had the TD660 and now I upgraded to the 802. So yeah, it's, uh, I really like this amp. It's a really great amp. So. Every song I can go through okay. some other sounds. Like it will be in mono now, but uh, that's okay. So the main thing, uh, just gonna turn this on. Yeah, here we go. So it's a slap setting. And for this, it's also like uh, you have this uh, solo setting. So it has some of those sounds, uh, and then it makes a lot of noise. So I just use that for one thing and then there's like a, I don't know, there's, you know, where, where it has some reverb and... But it, it's, it's a pretty cool thing because you could do uh, this thing also because we, it, um, changes uh, presets automatically because we play with a click track so like whenever I have a harmonic like it could that it's like a short delay and it, it like normally it goes out in stereo and then it goes back to like the finger EQ and so there's a different one for the slap EQ and uh, you know whenever the stuff as well and uh, I don't know uh, some yeah it's just like solo sounds yeah, kind of sounds like that and uh, what else yeah I have 
some synthesizer sound in this also. Uh, I get a. Oh, uh, yeah, and here's like a pitched swell sound. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I actually do. <laughs> it's in the verses of Wake Me Up. And uh, so this one is... It's not really like a normal octave, but it's like a... So that's a pretty... And like compared to the actual normal octaver, uh, here. Uh, everyone but uh, except for one, okay. which is a ballad that Jonah and I, uh, okay. Jonah and I kind of plays it solo and then like okay. I come in after a while. So, so yeah, then, but then there's like some. some of the sounds I'm, I'm using. Uh, most of the tour we did by bus, so then I could bring, then I actually played the axe effects, but uh, this is kind of, uh, I could bring both of these as a hand luggage into oh, two yes. separate pieces so that's like uh, the fly rig kind of yeah, that was so so this is this these two and bases and the suitcase is usually what I bring for fly gigs with their loops but it's uh, I usually need you know a bunch of gear to m make everything happen so Like usually when we play it a lot, then I kind of practice, don't have to practice it that much because it's a lot of the songs is really about muscle memory because there's so much going on. But uh, we did the mistake sometimes when we hadn't played for long that nobody really ran through the set and it was like suboptimal gigs then. <laughs> so um, usually, yeah, I need to run it through. Like most of it is there, but there's always, I mean, there, there is always fuck ups in these gigs and uh, it's almost never the same place where we fuck up <laughs> so it, it's like different stuff so I guess we have to check it if we do the same thing two gigs in a row then you need to practice it but, uh, but I mean then there are of course like the, there's some improvised moments and I mean that's like kind of a lifelong thing like they could always get better but uh, yeah and I'm very disorganized with practicing so it's just like oh yeah I have this thing I want to learn and then I sit with that for a while and it's uh, just like I kind of usually have a bass in my bed so whenever like I practice a lot without an amp because I'm really lazy and I don't want to do the thing you know where I have yeah, to plug in the thing where I where I'm plugged in is when I'm practice songs and need to practice with a, a track or something like that but uh, otherwise it's usually just like the, the instrument by itself and I don't know if that's optimal or something I would recommend, but that's just how I do it usually. Like, yeah, I, I just think it has to be fun. And like, I still think it's fun, so I'm, I'm glad about that. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be kind of a sucky profession if you hated it all the time. <laughs> I think six string is the ideal because I played it for such a long time. I had a teacher that was really important to me like when I was 18 that played a six string bass and I kind of wanted to be like him so like I bought uh, a six string so like uh, actually the same bass that he had also so I was a fanboy I guess but yeah he was really important in my development so a lot I think like playing six string is like 
because of him a lot. Uh, so yeah, my favorite moment like with him was like we. I had this like standard that we played for six months that we just tried the different approaches to. And then it was like, yeah, I want you to improvise over it now. And then I improvised like two rounds of it. And, and he's from the northern part of Sweden, so he doesn't like speak very much. He's like, it's very few words and really straight to the point. Uh, but he w then he was like, uh, okay, try it again. Uh, and it was like a long silence, like this time, try to play a little bit better. <laughs> And, and then he laughed, <laughs> but it was it was it was always brutal, and he could stop me like mid through a solo, and like yeah, if you did that, that would be so annoying. Like if you were in a playing session, like if I he played a solo and I was comping him, and like when you when you do this thing that that's I I find it really annoying, and don't do that again. And then he explained why, but it it was like we had that kind of relationship where it was like. He could say those things in a friendly way, mm -hmm. but he, he could still be pretty harsh on me. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. He was just super nice to me always, and uh, also gave me like really long lessons that I didn't have to do. And uh, yeah, he really I, I don't know. I can't thank him enough. And then it's also like I uh, I don't know. I wanted to you know reach out and try weird things I I don't consider myself you know like as a normal bass player in that way I want to try like different stuff and yeah weird things and then it's like, good to have a six string because you can do more but I try like going up and like play a seven string and stuff like that but uh, then that was like it was too much of a leap. I didn't want like I was too old at that point. I didn't want to learn a new string, and yeah, I had two small hands and stuff like that as well. So. Yeah. Like I can check the system, so it's like uh, it's uh, I could do it individually. So I have like the, I usually have loud drums. So, yeah. Now, I, I usually like all the like microphones except for uh, like these uh, ambient microphones. Yeah. I usually turn off as much as possible. Yeah, so. so when I hear the audience. Or, like, yeah, that's the, the that's the that's the problem. But uh, it's just that it's usually you know a lot of noise that comes into those things, and like I hear my bass differently. Which is a shame because I don't usually hear Jonah that much during the gigs, like the vocals. I hear his keyboards very well, but it's just like, yeah, I know I don't need the vocal cues, but uh, but it's just like uh, for the sake of like, it must be hell being a singer because it picks up so much uh, crap that that microphone. But uh, yeah, and then it's uh, yeah, myself. Actually, I apparently have the snares louder than myself. And then, yeah, I back up keyboards and uh, Jonas keyboards and like different back tra tracks. Now, this is my voice. Uh, I should turn that down. So, and um, yeah. yeah. Do you have a lot of cues on the thing just like what uh, songs coming next and in what key or something like no, that? No, it's just some places where it's counting, you know, after a solo when it's like open for a long time or something. I have cues during the drum solo so I won't get lost. Okay. No, it's just like whenever I get in, I have a one, two, three, four, and then I know yeah, when to right. answer because it's like a really long one and That's I don't have to stand there and count. Yeah. So dirt loops is the main thing. So, uh, but uh, yeah, there's other stuff as well. Uh, it's just uh, this is like kind of a certain way of playing, and I like to play like normal bass also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, and also, yeah, you know stuff that are more based around improvisation and you know where it's looser than their lips is as well so and then stuff that are really less loose than their lips as well it's just i don't know i like to play <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for coming here tonight, and we're really looking forward to it. And also, like, I really want to say sorry for everybody that like had uh, inconveniences with the gig that was cancelled. So, I hope we didn't mess uh, things up. But uh, yeah, I always really enjoyed being here, and I 
I really hope to come back soon again. So thanks a lot.